Howdy y'all! Welcome back to Frenchie's Bakery. Today we are going to be making a farm themed cake, hence the howdy y'all. Farm themed cakes are so popular right now. So many orders are coming in for me where they want um, smash cakes made for their farm themed birthday parties and it's typically like the ages from one to five where I see like farm themed parties and stuff but it is a really cute theme and I'm glad that it is a theme because I think it is really really adorable. We actually just had our state fair last week. It's called the Farm Show. Um, we have it here in Pennsylvania and it is held at the Farm Show Complex. You can see all sorts of farm animals and touch them and learn about them and eat amazing food. This year, well last week, I actually got to see a live cow birth. It was the most incredible thing ever. I'm totally like, I'm into birth and stuff. I was actually going to school for labor and delivery, so that is something that I really am into. So it was awesome to see. And um, I've actually been brainstorming to see like what cake I was gonna make next on this channel, because lately I've just been putting up recipes. Like I just put up a peanut butter blossom video on how to make peanut butter blossom cookies and you guys should totally go check that out if you haven't because it is the best recipe ever. They turn out perfect every single time. But anyways, I was thinking about making winter cakes because we still have a few months of winter left unfortunately and every cake I thought of it just seemed like Christmassy so um, I had to steer away from that and I'm thinking and then I was like why not make a farm show cake since farm show was last week and um, I thought of this cake and I think it's great and I am going to be giving you guys really good tips and tricks and I'm going to try and explain it as best I can to you so you can make this cake super easily at home. I think it's going to be pretty easy to put together. So um, I want you guys to be able to have that farm themed party and not spend $800 on this huge tiered cake at a bakery and I want you guys to be able to impress your children who you're having it for and the people at the party because that's always the best feeling ever. So try and make this cake with me and also tag me in any pictures that you guys get of it if you ever make this cake. Now I'm going to be making the bottom tier a cow and then the tier above it a pig, tier above it a sheep and then the tier above it a horse. So you guys can pick whatever farm animals you would like. You can stick to what I'm doing. You can make it taller, shorter, whatever. It doesn't matter, but I'm gonna be showing you guys how to assemble a tiered cake and how to support it and everything. And um, actually speaking of, I want to show you guys how to put together um, boards for making a tiered cake. So here I have my cake boards and this is a six inch board. So the cake is going to physically be sitting on this and then you want to put a cake board that's a little bit bigger underneath it, just tape it on so um, you can handle the cake and it'll be really easy to put it in the freezer and everything after your crumb coats. And then whenever you're ready to stack the cakes, you can just peel this off, which I'll be showing you whenever I do it. Um, but you can just peel it off and then um, you'll always have the same size cake board under your cake to keep everything stable and that's just really how it goes. So I did that for each of my layers. I just taped them all together to prep and um, I wanna show you how I did my four inch one real quick. When you're working with really, really small cakes like this four inch one here, the cake seems to like move around and it becomes so difficult because it's so slippery and you can't ice it perfectly. So I do this little trick where I put some icing on the bottom of the board to stick it together and then I also line the bottom of the cake board and the cake together with some icing and then put it in the freezer while I'm working on my other cakes. So whenever I get to that part, it won't slide around and everything like that. So this is a really good trick. I recommend it, especially if you're working with really small cakes because they always move around and it's so frustrating. Okay, so now that we got all of that out of the way, we can start icing our cakes and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to ice each of my layers. I'm gonna fill in between the layers with just plain old icing and do the crumb coats and pop them in the freezer and then we will be putting on the thick outer layer and that's, it's just gonna be as simple as that, you know, icing regular cakes. And then we will get on to um, decorating and assembling and stuff like that. 
But what I wanted to point out is with my cakes, I'm actually going to be matching the outside with the inside. So my cow cake is going to be a marble cake. The um, pig cake is going to be a strawberry cake. I actually have one layer of chocolate, so it's chocolate strawberry. And uh, the sheep cake is just plain old vanilla. And then the horse cake is chocolate because it's going to be a brown horse and um, just plain old buttercream icing. Now, I'm going to be doing some of the decorations with fondant, but I'm not going to be covering the full cake in fondant. So we're going to fill the layers, do our crumb coat, and then put on the final coat, and then I think we'll get to decorating. Um, I actually went ahead and put some of the cow spots on top of the cake so whenever we put the pig on top it kind of overlaps just a little bit but you don't have to do that it's just an option so we are going to put in the supports of the cake so it doesn't collapse this is actually extremely heavy already and it's just one cake so when you start having a tiered cake it gets really really heavy so you want to put in supports um, you can use dowels or smoothie straws, which I recommend smoothie straws. So um, if you want to be absolutely perfect, uh, you should get a cake board the size of the cake that's going to be going on top. I know that mine is an 8 inch and it's roughly going to be right around here, so I'm just going to guesstimate. But you're going to want to stick in your straw straight down, make sure that it's not going at an angle at all, and make sure that it completely is down. So you're going to lift it up just a little bit and right where that rim of icing is on it, if you can see that on the camera, you're gonna cut straight across and then push it back down in. And we can actually reuse this straw. So we're gonna do the same thing right next to it and we're actually going to make a square. So there's gonna be four and then I usually like to put one right in the middle, but I think I'm gonna skip that because the sizes of my cakes are really small, just an eight inch, six inch, and four inch are gonna be going on top of this, so. I think four will be plenty. So we're just going to finish doing this. Now we're going to be putting our next cake on top. So that board that you have underneath, you can actually just bend it back and get your hand under there. Release that tape. Make sure that your tape stays on that board and you don't have it on here because you don't want to be eating tape. And then we are going to line it up right in the center. And pop it down. Very simple, just like that. And we are going to do that for the rest of the cakes. So I am going to be pressing down my four straws and lifting them up, pushing them in, and then stacking the rest of the cakes. Before I put on my very last tier, I'm actually going to be putting a dowel through the cake. So you do want to have cake boards that have um, this option here to pop out this hole, or you can just cut a hole into your cutting board. But we're going to eyeball it and go straight down the center of the cake, and this is going to help keep all of the cakes from tipping over. So my plan is to just decorate the cake now just as it is. You want to have your cake usually tiered whenever you decorate it so you don't mess up the decorations whenever you put it together. Some of my icing is a little sloppy like, like here. You can see a little bit of sloppiness and the plan is to just cover it up. Like down here if there's any cake showing through you can just put a spot over it. It, that's the magic of decorations. You can just cover up 
um, the flaws of the cake. So I am going to work from the bottom up. So we're gonna start on the cow, and I think I'm going to cut out some more spots. So just roll out some black fondant and take a knife or whatever you have and just cut out some swirly shapes. It doesn't need to be perfect. No spot is perfect on a cow. So that's what I'm gonna work on. And then we're just going to stick it to the icing. So you can just put the fondant right on it and it won't come off. So for the face, I left a little blank spot in the front so I can have a spot for the nose and the eyes and everything. So right now I'm just rolling out some tan fondant to put on for his little mouth and nose area. And what I cut out, it kind of looks like a bean to me, um, but we're just going to put that at the very bottom here. And then with a little fondant ball tool, you're just going to make kind of a circle impression here for his little nostrils. So roll it around. And then the same thing for his little mouth. So we're just gonna make kind of like a little smile. And just press that in. And then we're gonna roll out some black fondant for his eyes and a little bit of hair that we're gonna be putting on the top. And we're just gonna put those right above little mouth and I put a little speck of white in them for like the gleam of his eye and for his little hair this doesn't need to be perfect either just kind of some little ratty hair hanging down and just place that above his eyes and then on the back we're gonna add a cute little tail so just roll out some white fondant and put some little black spots on it so right here just press that into the cake and then I made some little ears so out of white fondant just a little triangle add in some tan in the center and then add a little bit of spots on it and we're just gonna set that right above his head just like so and then we're gonna move on to the pig so to hold the nose in the cake, I'm going to put a toothpick in here and then we're just going to slide the nose in. I just used some pink and formed it into the shape of the nose and then made some slits down it for the hole of the nose. So we're just going to push that into the cake. And then I also made some eyeballs for the pig. I did white for the back and then a black pupil and then some white for some shimmer in the eye. And I'm just gonna put that right above the nose. I'm just gonna do a little eyebrow above his eye. So just a little bit of black fondant and curve it. And then some really tiny floppy ears. We're just gonna stick those above the eyebrows. And then a tiny little corkscrew tail for his back. I'm actually going to be heading to work in like 10 minutes. So um, I'm not sure if you guys are going to notice a difference in the lighting whenever I film tonight, but just in case if you do, that's why, because I'm going to be filming at night. But I'm going to pipe a few swirls on the white part, the white cake. Um, this is going to be the sheep. So this is the tip that I'm using right here. It has the jagged edges. I'm not sure what number it is. I'm sorry, but you can find this at any craft store. So we're just gonna do some rosettes around the whole entire cake. So we're gonna start here, burst of pressure, swirl, and then release. And we're just going to do that around the whole entire white cake. Alright, so for the sheep, I just did a circle of tan and then I added its facial expressions and everything and the bow. So I'm going. <laughs> Don't mind Michael. Okay, so I'm going to just place that here. And it looks like a dog right now, so hopefully when I put the white around it, it looks more like a sheep. So now we're going to move on to the horse. So I have 
piece of white fondant and we are going to be placing this right in the center of the horse and this is going to be like the stripe down a horse's face and then just like the cow I have another like bean shaped smiley face shaped piece and we're going to stick that on the bottom part of the horse and overlap that on the white that we have there. And for the little nostrils, I already have one of them made. So what I did was just a little ball of tan and then we're going to take this tool again and just press it into the bottom. And we're just gonna put those on the corners of this little tan part here. And then I have some eyes here. So it's just an oval shape of black and then I have two sparkles in the eyes and we're going to place that up above the nostrils and then I also have some eyelashes here so I just rolled out some black fondant really tiny and we're just going to put that right on the edges of the eyes and then with a star tip we're going to be doing a rosette right in the middle and we're also going to just do a mane the whole way down the back kind of like the really popular Unicorn cakes that are out right now. Make a few swirls all over the head and then down the back. And off to the side. And then you can also just do a burst of pressure and release. So there's different types of designs. And then I have a lighter color brown with that rigged rough edge that I used for the sheep and we'll also do bursts of pressure all over. I made two little ears for the top so I used really dark brown fondant and then a lighter shade so it's like a tan and I made these by cutting them out with a heart shaped cookie cutter and then you just squeeze the bottom and that's how you get this shape. And then I'm just going to stick them right in the top. And actually, our cake is finished here. So let me zoom out and show you guys the finished result. All right, guys. So this is the finished cake. It's way bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's like as big as my torso. Maybe even bigger, actually. It's so big and it's so heavy. I had like a really tough time carrying it from the fridge into here. But I love it. I think it is so cute. And I hope I made it really simple by explaining it for you guys so you can recreate this really easily and hopefully impress your kids and whoever's gonna be at the party. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed. And it was very simple and really fun to make. Um, so here are the little tails on the back. If you can see them. I hope it was simple to follow. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Bye.